It's all about the trades. Lots of teams, lots of players. We'll look at all the movement during the final week of trading this season. Plus, we'll meet the man who's been directing the team with the best record in the ECHL. We sure hope you've gotten in a good warm-up and you're all ready to go because ECHL Week starts now. Hi, welcome to another edition of ECHL Week. This time we come to you for the DCU Center in Worcester, Massachusetts, home of the Worcester Railers. The trade deadline has come and gone. Let's check out all the ECHL activity leading up to that date. The annual late season altering of rosters by trades came to an end on Thursday when the deadline for such deals passed. Whether it was teams attempting to restock personnel as a result of NHL or AHL affiliate swaps in their respective leagues, or tweaking lineups to find the right roster combination for the stretch and playoff runs, more than 20 players were on the move in the final week of trading. Let's run down all the activity. Florida was perhaps the busiest team leading up to the trading deadline. The Everblades, who have already clinched a Kelly Cup playoff berth, lost a number of players as a result of NHL affiliate Carolina being very active leading up to the Major League trading deadline. The Blades made three moves. They got forward Derek Angeli, who played most of the season with Cincinnati, from Norfolk for just out of college defenseman Nick Ford, plus they added forward Gage Terrell from Fort Wayne for future considerations. The Everblades also picked up defenseman Jake Clifford from Tulsa to complete the futures portion of a deal from early January. Norfolk was also busy. Out of the playoff hunt now, the Admirals are looking to next year. In addition to Ford, they picked up defenseman Ruslan Rakhmatov from Wheeling for futures and swapped defenseman with Greenville, sending Joe Masonis to the Swamp Rabbits and getting the well-traveled John Fergelli in return. The ads are Fergelli's fourth ECHL team this season. Oddly enough, the second-year pro was also traded at last season's deadline. The Idaho Steelheads acquired the ECHL rights to forward Yannick Veyu from the Kalamazoo Wings. He'll be a valuable pickup for Idaho if he returns from Laval in the AHL where he spent much of the season. Heading to Kalamazoo in return is forward Spencer Noss. Wheeling and Redding swapped defenders. Aaron Titcomb heads to the Royals and Jeremy Beaudry moves to the Nailers. Rapid City sent cash to Adirondack in exchange for blue liner Brett Beauvais. Some goalies were on the move too. Brampton acquired veteran Jamie Phillips from Cincinnati for futures and Orlando obtained rookie Packy Munson from Fort Wayne also for future considerations. The Solar Bears also swapped forwards with Kansas City. Dylan Fitz went west, and Todd Cozen, who had been tied for third on the Mavericks with 12 goals, headed to the Sunshine State. Toledo moved some pieces around in hopes of duplicating last year's lengthy playoff run. The Walleye acquired forward Cedric Lacroix, currently in the AHL, from Greenville, in return for another forward, Jimmy Lodge. A significant addition for Toledo was a former Walleye member, forward Emerson Clark, who returns to the city where he made his pro debut in 2013. Jacksonville parted with its captain in return for Alex Crom and future considerations. The Walleye also sent defenseman Mark Auk to Orlando to complete a previous trade. Auk had the distinction of being dealt twice in the same day. After the Solar Bears obtained him, they turned around and shipped him to Rapid City in return for goaltender Alex Sakalaropoulos. Worcester, looking toward next year, sent forward Bo Brower to Rapid City for cash and shipped forward Cody Payne to Indy for futures. To make room for Payne, the Fuel traded forward Christian Horn to Utah for a payment to be determined. Finally, completing a deal which started in October, Maine obtained defenseman Austin McEnany from Norfolk. A quick look at the news when ECHL Week continues. Hockey, it's here. The official app of the NHL. Hi, I'm Ed.
Evan Newgold of the Newfoundland Growlers, and you're watching ECHL Week. It's not just about the trades this week. Let's look at news from all around the ECHL. For one night, the Florida Everblades are changing their name. For Saturday's home game against Greenville, Florida will be known as the Skunk Apes. The Jersey Seas team members wear that night will recognize the Skunk Ape, kind of the Bigfoot of Florida. And the post-game auction of those uniforms will benefit a nonprofit group which supports drinking water initiatives in Africa. The ECHL's second foray into outdoor play known as Winterfest will take place in Toledo this December. The Walleye have revealed the jerseys the team will wear in games on December 26th and December 31st. The opponents have yet to be announced. The ECHL's first outdoor games were hosted by the Walleye at 5th 3rd Field during the 2014-15 season. A couple of Mountain Division teams make an appearance in our highlight game, next on ECHL Week. The ECHL season is here, and ECHL TV is your ticket to all the action. With streaming to your PC, phone, tablet, Apple TV, Chromecast, and Amazon Fire TV, you'll never miss a moment of the action. Plus, you can watch up to four games at once on PC with Quad View. Watch live or on demand with both home and away commentary. Single game and season passes are available. Visit ECHL.TV to subscribe. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. There it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Hi, I'm Michael Hauser of the Cincinnati Cyclones, and you're watching ECHL Week. My generic railer friend here is modeling chest and shoulder protection that players wear. Now let's take a look at two Western Conference teams doing battle in our highlight game of the week. Helgeson wraps it to the near wall, comes to center with the help of Brett Sapinski. Now White has a lead in, left of circle, comes in, feeding far side, and Sapinski, he scores! Make it four straight games with Tellies! A five-hole shot for Sapinski! Good plays generated, now Wagner comes the other way, left side, shot scores! And he rips that bar down. Lewis does try to draw penalties, White gets a lead pass right side, one on two, gets loose in the slot, shot's kicked away, rebound is loose, scores! Tom Schell, bottle cover for Will Merchant off the rebound, his 18th of the year, makes it a two to one lead. Blocked by Maxwell, now it's a foot race to the puck, Maxwell's by himself, right circle scoops it up, comes backhand and he scores. Point dove to his right, sold out four, and Maxwell had the open net. Gets down low to the corner in front. Scores! The persistence paid off, and it's Kong and McCauley to the flood net by the right toe of Ouled. By Johnson and Norrish, clapped around the wall, held in by Richard. Far point shot, head goes off the crossbar, near side, they score. And Wagner in down low gets a second of the night to make it 3 3. These the Steelheads. He also picked up his first shootout goal last Friday. He'll come in, right-handed, between the hashes, backhand, it scores! Right side, Maxwell comes in, left-handed, hashes, backhand, and Point is able to make the stop! He fights it out from the line! And that does it from CenturyLink Arena. Colton Point gets his first shootout win of his career, and the Steelheads take the extra tally and a 4-3 victory. Hi, I'm Chase Langa, your Jacksonville Iceman, and you're watching ECHL Week. It's time for another in our Meet the New Coaches series. This time, Steve Bergen of the South Carolina Stingrays. Bergen has had a great start to his rookie season as South Carolina's bench boss. The team has led the ECHL for much of the season and has already clinched a 13th consecutive playoff appearance for the second time in team history. For years, regardless of the coach, the team has adopted a defense-first philosophy, a concept Bergen has been happy to embrace and share with his players. Well, if you look at our history, we've had we've had good success with that in the past. I'm not the first coach in the Stingrays to, to kind of harp on that, so um, it helps with some of the returning guys to to help start and set that tone. And then um, you know, seeing the success we've had 
and then just you know as we got as we got going throughout the season you know and we started having more and more success I think a lot of guys bought into that and they take a lot of pride in it now. Bergen talks about his first season as head coach and how it differs from the three years he spent as an assistant. I think you always you know have when you the first time you go through something right you you, you have a little um, I wouldn't say doubt but you know you you're anxious to see how, how you're gonna how you're gonna do when you're put in that situation and kind of thrown in the fire. I was fortunate enough to, to coach under some great coaches in South Carolina that taught me the correct way to do it. Uh, we have a ton of support with our affiliation and then just um, having just great people you know, surrounding me in, in, in South Carolina. So it, it's been a great situation where, where I've come into and, and I've been really fortunate you know, with uh, how things have gone. One of the keys to the Stingray's success is the culture which surrounds the team. It's as strong and positive as any in the ECHL. It's obviously a great city. Um, people obviously love love living there. They love playing there, and as more and more people do it, I think more and more people get invested in it, and it's kind of the standard. And you see, when guys leave, they still care about it. So having those guys, you know, around and being able to lean on them has been huge, and it's. Um, it's just a really tight-knit family. But as well as the season has gone so far, Bergen is keenly aware that his maiden voyage as head coach will be best remembered for what takes place in April and perhaps May and June. I mean, obviously, you know, we've had a great start and, and that's our goal and um, that's kind of the mindset we have. So, but we got to go out there and prove it and earn it every day. It's not just going to, we're not just going to show up in May and June and, you know, we got to continue to earn, earn our success. So that's something that we uh, try to focus on every day. That wraps up another edition of ECHL Week from Worcester, Massachusetts. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow us on all our social media channels, especially on Twitter. We just passed 5,000 followers there, and as a result, we're giving away free stuff to celebrate. Check it out. See you next time.